2007, I began making a trilogy of handmade, micro-budgeted films. The goal was to have more fun while making a film, but be just as polished and professional as any other film that was not so handmade. One of the keys to having fun was to come up with a great off-the-shelf idea for gear that you could fabricate with a simple visit to Home Depot or your neighborhood grip supply store. One of my digital rules demanded that I do not rent any equipment that would force me to take out a big insurance policy to indemnify the gear. And since I owned the cameras and some rudimentary lighting stuff already, that left me to the sound department. I want to show you now the evolution of my micro-budget sound cart and how far it's come over the last decade, encompassing four feature films. Route 30 was the first film in my trilogy of backwoods comedies. Since my DP, Keith Duggan, had his orders to keep his camera and lighting gear to one small minivan or SUV, it was up to me to build my first rolling sound cart that captured the spirit of the No Frills movie. Here's what sound cart beta version looked like. A small, lightweight Home Depot hand truck with a plastic Staples office supply file bin zip-tied to the frame. This cart turned out to be a very good first version. It was light, very portable, and could be lifted by one guy into the minivan. Some of the guest sound mixers on this film were my pals Devin Delibero, Chip Bolzik, Daryl Vaught, and one day cast member Dave Cowgill, who ironically would craft Sound Card 3.0 a decade later for my latest film, The Father and the Bear. Let's move along to Route 32, which was shot three years later in the bitter winter of 2010. Back to South Central Pennsylvania we went to continue the hijinks of the now beloved and cultish characters from the first film. For two, I wanted to step up the quality and function of the sound cart, which was dubbed Sound Cart 2.0, and ended up being used for two films total. Let's take a look at some of the improvements. New heavier duty hand truck from Film Tools in Burbank with pneumatic tires. I refreshed the staples bin and this time raised it higher so I could put a die-hard battery below for onboard power. We shot some night for night in this one. New plug-in power strip mounted to the back, oak top for the mixer, and the beginnings of the use of more wireless mics. A fine swivel cup holder was added to the cart for the mixer's convenience. Upgrades to the sound kit also included a Zoom H4N for recording. As much as I like direct sound to the camera, the tethering aspect we experienced in part one made this update a necessity. Plus, now that there was software that sunk your dailies for you via waveform, it made it easier. I also added an umbrella for weather protection. The big kind for golfing. And boy, did that ever come in handy. On Route 33, I kept adding stuff to this design, and we went full wireless. My sound mixer, Patrick, could roll around and park himself wherever he wanted near the set and get great sound via the Sennheiser system I owned. But let's face it, this cart was long in the tooth. The plastic was just not fun, the drawers weren't stable, I needed something stronger and more durable. And not only that, I wanted to be really happy every time I looked over at Patrick and saw how stylish he looked while mixing. Enter Sound Cart 3.0. I was gearing up to shoot my next handmade film in the summer of 2015, and I wanted the next sound cart to be awesome. Here's what I most needed in the new rig. More storage, less clutter, USB chargers for onset mobile devices, better boom holder, and something just a little classier. As it turns out, one of my oldest friends and lead actor in the trilogy happens to be a master carpenter and makes crazy great furniture right out of his garage. I felt despite the weight implications, I needed to have something more solid that would last for the next five films and beyond. So I challenged Dave Cowgill to create the backbone of Soundcart 3.0, the ultimate chest of drawers. Using the same film tools dolly, I headed over to Dave's to get him started on the project. These plastic cheap, cheap ass Bed Bath & Beyond little shelves. So we're going to replace those. We tore those out and we're going to replace it with a beautiful wood custom made cabinet with uh, several drawers in there for all the, the sound items.
3.0 turned out to be the Cadillac of micro-budgeted Gorilla Gear, and it evoked quite a reaction from the rest of the crew, especially Keith Duggan, the DP, who wished I'd made him a cart for the camera department. Well, when the camera department gets its gear down to the size of the sound department, maybe I will. Let's look back at the progression of this fun little cart. Beta, 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0. As you can see, you can make pretty much anything out of stuff you see at Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm happy to say that I'll be using my African mahogany with zebrawood inlay sound card for many more films to come. My DP buddy Ross Berryman sent me a picture one day of a broom cam that he was using on the set of Grimm up in Portland. I was instantly hooked on the idea of making my own to use on one of my shoots. So off to Home Depot I went to find a soft bristle indoor push broom. Once I had the broom, all I needed was a couple of arms to hold the camera and the monitor to the rod and a 6 foot HDMI cable to connect the two. Just for fun, I added a couple of quarter twenty ball heads to the broom in case I ever needed to mount a small LED light or even a couple more GoPro cameras to run at the same time. My next objective was to test this baby out myself. And what better place to do that than the new CBS action comedy Rush Hour, which I happen to be directing at the time. DP Marshall Adams and his camera and grip departments embrace the broom cam. Here's a little clip of the shot and the scene we used it for. Yeah. Steps. Ready and action. Building gear to use on your shoots is really, really fun. And the beauty is, these things work just as well as the expensive stuff you see in magazines or online. And they don't cost near as much. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.